Hey, thank you so much for clicking on this video. My name is Vea and I'm here to talk about all things high conflict, divorce, or divorcing a narcissist related. If you're new to this channel, welcome. Thank you so much for checking me out. If you find this information helpful, please click like or subscribe. It's free for you to do and it totally helps my channel. Also check out the links below. I've been making tons of videos. I've got lots of information to share all around how to help you navigate the chaos of a high conflict divorce in the most powerful, graceful way possible. Today, I wanna to cover a really, really important topic that if I had known about years or decades ago, all of this could have been avoided and my entire life would be different. What I wanna talk about is a meme I saw the other day that said, violence is always abuse, but abuse is not always violence. I really, I feel so passionate about this. I want to get the message out to everybody, especially the youth and the children on the planet, that abuse isn't always violence. Abuse can look like a bunch of different things, and whether you're getting hit or not is not the litmus test of finding out whether you're being abused. Abuse can be the cold shoulder or the silent treatment. It can be financial manipulation. It can be controlling all the money or making you ask for money. Abuse can be monitoring your cell phone. Abuse can be telling you that your friends aren't cool and you shouldn't hang out with them and creating isolation. Abuse can be actually isolating you geographically by moving you somewhere where you don't have any resources or contacts. Abuse can be gaslighting where the perpetrator is telling you things that happened didn't happen or implying that you're crazy. Abuse can be telling you that you're too sensitive or that you're overreacting every time you bring something up. Abuse can be using your children as weapons against you to control your behavior, to get you to stay in the relationship. Abuse can be using guilt and shame to control you and manipulate you. Abuse can be any or all of those things and more. And often this type of abuse, if in a one-time situation, doesn't appear as abuse. So if we take one isolated incident, of a person saying, well, no, that, that didn't happen. I never said that when they did. Maybe we can brush that off as not a big deal or they were having a bad day or they were a little bit confused or they didn't remember well. So often abuse like this is these little tiny incidents that in themselves are too small, but over time, layered upon layered upon layer, the impact is so huge and life-changing for its victims. The results of this type of abuse are lack of confidence, disassociation, where you don't even know what's happening to yourself, brain fog, difficult to diagnose physical things like fibromyalgia, adrenal fatigue, mental fatigue, insomnia or depression or anxiety, agoraphobia, uncharacteristically starting to just fly off the handle and explode in anger, wanting to withdraw socially and, and socially isolate, uh, difficulty making decisions, fear of consequences, being unable to decide anything because you're afraid of whatever you do is gonna be wrong. I want for everybody to understand that abuse can be any of the things that I just listed and to know that the impacts of abuse look like anxiety, depression, withdrawal, trouble making decisions, brain fog, so that when we encounter a person who's exhibiting those behaviors, we're maybe not thinking like, oh, she's so standoffish. We're maybe looking for like, hey, is there trauma going on? Is this person living with abuse? And then being able to offer some help to them. So I think the solution is bringing awareness to yourself around this. So start looking for signs of abuse in your own life. Examine your own relationships and consider, you know, maybe that person wasn't just a jerk or a bad boyfriend, or maybe my mother wasn't just unresourced. Maybe those people were abusive. Then you can look at how that might have impacted you and the way you lived your life moving forward and you could start to see, maybe I'm not a loser. Maybe I'm not a person who makes bad decisions. Maybe I'm a person who's living with a huge level of trauma. Another solution I think that would help this whole problem is to start naming abuse as what it is, 
out in public and on social media, even though it's uncomfortable. I don't know if you've noticed, but if you drop the word abuse into a conversation, it actually makes people withdraw. They will pull their energy back or they might even physically pull back. Let's keep doing this until it gets normalized. Just in the same way that talking about gay people used to be totally taboo or even talking about depression or mental illness used to be totally taboo. Now it's not. Just in the same way that disabled people were completely isolated from society and now they have a place in our schools, in our workspaces, in our community, in our everywhere, we have to do the same thing with abuse or this isn't going to change. It really comes down to awareness on a personal and on a social level and you can be one of the people who creates that change. That was a bit of a rant. I'm super fired up about this topic. I just really feel like if people had this information, they would be making different choices in how to heal themselves and how to protect themselves from abusive relationships. I know I would have. If you found this information helpful, please click like, subscribe, share it with people you think it will help. And there's a link down below. You can dosh me some money if you want to support my channel and the work that I'm doing. Thank you so much for your time. Take good care.